So this is the clutch. And the clutch is comprised of this rubber O-ring and this steel and then the clutch. And you can see the clutch material there. And these go in this configuration. There's no specific indication on the steel or the clutch, but this O-ring goes on top here. And that's how those go in together, one after the other. You can see a bunch down here. So that's the nature of the clutch pack. So at the bottom, after the last steel, is a spacer. And then another steel. There's no gappers between them or anything like that. This is the clutch boss. And beneath that is a thrust washer. And inside of this drive gear housing, you can see there's a there's a bushing in there. It looks actually in fairly good condition and looks actually quite new. And in fact, the the clutches themselves don't look that badly worn, so I'm not certain we're going to have to replace this. It looks like it may still function just fine. You should also note there's a big gasket down here. It goes all the way around. This is the push plate. The push plate goes on top and holds everything together with these spring screws. They go down into these areas right in here. And this is the push crown. And this push crown goes down inside of here before you put that on. And at the bottom of the push crown is this ball bearing. And then on the other side of the push crown is this bolt. And this bolt has this spring load washer on it. So the way it goes in is the clutches come up and then this spring washer goes in like so. And then the bolt and of course then the ball bearing would go down in here. And then the push crown down in here. And then you get the push plate put on top. On the other side of this, which we don't have, is a bearing and a couple of thrust plates. So we'll have to look around and see if we can find where those are in the box of parts. Well, here's a bit of a problem, as you can see. We have a broken friction pack here. So it looks like we will be ordering some new ones of these. I also took a look at the wear on the, uh, the clutch boss here, and I don't actually see a lot of wear on the clutch boss that would cause me any concern. Um, it's there, but it's pretty mild. I think we'll be fine with it, but I will replace the frictions. These little spacer gaskets that are in there, you see they have a C configuration to them. And my understanding about these is that they go in like that, as near as I can tell with the C part facing the outside. So these crush down a little bit, they crush gaskets. And they're bigger than the actual friction plates. So the friction plates will ride on the inside of these things. Um, but they're smaller than the actual steels. So they'll ride on top of the steel, but the friction plates will ride down or are on the outside of it. So, um, and that's how those things go in. So we have a bit of a problem. These are the new clutches and frictions for the clutches. And this is the old one right here. Now the problem that we're facing with these new ones is although they fit perfectly, like in terms of the total diameter, you can see on the inside there, they don't, they're actually quite a bit larger 
or the, the hole on the inside is quite a bit smaller on the new clutches. So consequently, what happens is these gaskets go on the inside. And what is transpiring is that these gaskets, they, they will just barely fit on the inside of these things such that you actually can't get it to sit appropriately in this thing. So what I've been having to do is actually grind the inside of this out to make it large enough, the diameter on the inside large enough so that these gaskets can go in there and these gaskets sort of help with the clutches um, disengaging. So if that's not in there, that's going to burn out the clutches and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But the hole is too damn small. So I've been grinding them out. So this is the rig we've been using. It's just a drill press and we have a the burr tool right in there right now, but that's for finishing. This is the item we're using, which is just a, a raw file. So we put the raw file in, spin this around, then we use the burring tool. We're going to take off right back, right back to the, the edge of these little uh, shoes right here. And that's how much we're going to take off in order to get the thing to actually fit appropriately inside the clutch housing. So as you can see, I've ground them down a little bit. This still has to be finished a little bit more, but you can see it's right down to the bone there. And I don't think that's enough. I think I have to go a little bit further to get it to work. And what I mean by getting it to work is right down in here is where that gasket goes. And that gasket, it has to sit perfectly flush down in there. If it doesn't, and if the you know clutches can't spin like this, then you got an issue. But even if that looks like it's in there, it really has to be perfectly flush. Otherwise, what you get is you get this these sitting up higher than they should be. So unless you can get that thing in there perfectly flush, keep grinding or don't order the wrong parts. Now, I don't know if it's I ordered the wrong part or if they just weren't clear enough on the website. I'm not going to disparage them because it's probably a DFU. I probably ordered the wrong part. I mean, I typed in DT1, you know, 1968 DT1 250, but I don't know if these are the right ones. I Maybe it's a change. Maybe they got rid of the gaskets later on. Who knows? I'm not going to disparage the site. They probably sent me what was correct. But it's unfortunate that I have to go to all this grinding work to get this to work. But, eh, fabrication's a thing. So I'm starting to figure out how the crankcase goes together. And this clutch goes on the other side of crankcase housing like this. But I'm taking a look at the inner gears, and this is the configuration that it says is the right one. So we've got a couple of control pinions here on this gear. These gears, they will all sort of mesh together and sink down in. Right now they're sort of leaning out a bit, but this all eventually goes in. But according to the diagram I have, this is the sort of the correct configuration with everything. These two pins sit over here and go inside this thing, which controls the shifting uh, on both of these. And you can see there's like a single, a single fork right there that moves things up and down. This one has a dual fork on it. This is sort of the configuration that it all has to go back together in. So the one issue I had was these two little items, and they fell out as I was taking apart the gears. And where those go are right inside of here. But I don't know whether they go down like this or up like this. I'm still trying to figure that out. I'll take a light and look in there and see if I can find out. But these two go together in a nice, perfect sort of ring, like that go together like that and then they fit right inside of here so i don't know whether it's up or down it's the only thing i gotta figure out and there should be a little groove that allows them to go up and down and that's about the only 
part I haven't quite figured out yet out of this configuration. As you can see, this is that single part, the single fork that goes in here. And it actually does go down in here and this goes up this way. Um, and again, this clutch pack goes underneath on the bottom side of this case. So I think we can get those all together. She looks like it'll be pretty easy. I'll let you know. I think that's roughly how those pieces go together. And as that thing spins, those will each go up and down, all three of them sort of independently based on whatever the setting is because this thing as it spins causes these things to go up and down as it goes up and down. There's a very small key. That key goes right inside of there when you're putting it together. So if you're wondering where that little key goes, that's where it goes. So this is the shift changer. It goes right down in this hole right down here, like so. And these prongs go up over top of this adjuster here. They sit down in there a little bit further. This item comes through the bottom right through this hole right in here. And this connector piece that you see here, this is what grabs onto and around these ports right here. And that's what gives you that shifting and turning of the, of the transmission shift. How this goes in is this goes underneath here. And this goes in here. And this peg goes in this hole right here. And that's how you line up that shifter mechanism. So as it moves back and forth, with, as this thing goes up and down and turns, basically when you're hitting the uh, shift mechanism, the pedal, then that's what will happen is that thing will push and pull and this thing will spin, which is basically popping through the case. This will spin and this thing will go up and down and that'll move the, uh, the various gears. So that's that part of it. There is another little piece that goes right in here and it goes in on this side. It's basically a bracket with two little small, sort of a half moon bracket. It's only about this long and it sits on this side facing up this way. Uh, and then, like we said, the other piece was that, uh, that key that went in the other side that we talked about yesterday. This is where the cam goes. So the cam, spring, and bolt, it's on the other side of this case here. And the cam rides on top of this flower-shaped thing. So that's why that bolt configuration is on the back. It does not go on this bolt. It goes on the other case, the half of the case. 